welcome to Arcadia University's BI327 Histology course lecture series on the endocrine system. In part one of this lecture, we're going to take a look at hormones. Uh, as with all of the lectures in this series, I encourage you to take a look at uh, the, the objectives uh, for this lecture because this will allow you to essentially take a look at what I think are the important concepts associated with this and it provides you with an opportunity to use these as study focusing questions. Now, if we take a look at the endocrine system, uh, the important thing to keep in mind is that what we're dealing with are uh, cells, and because we're focusing in on the endocrine system proper at this point, uh, organ systems that are not associated with a duct system. And so many of these are going to have an epithelial origin, so they're going to uh, develop from epithelial cells very early on in development. So in many cases, they were attached to some type of epithelial lining, some type of uh, boundary uh, within the body. Uh, start as a downgrowth into the connective tissue, respond to signals coming from those uh, underlying tissues. Uh, but what's different from the endocrine system from the uh, secretory cells that we've talked about previously is that the secretory cells that we've talked about previously, uh, like the digestive system organs, like the pancreas, the salivary glands, uh, even things like the liver, uh, have maintained a duct system. And so they release their secretory product into a dusk, duct system. Uh, the materials are transported through that duct system and then dumped out onto an epithelial surface or basically dumped into uh, an organ. What we've got with an endocrine system is essentially that duct system has been lost. So we start out as a downgrowth or accumulation of epithelial cells but we lose that connection to that overlying epithelial surface. And so we have cells generally with an epithelial origin, but they're not connected to a surface. They're going to be found surrounded by other tissues. And so they don't have a duct system. And so what we're going to be looking at is the ability for these cells to release their secretory product. In this case, the secretory products are going to be hormones that have to be transported in another way to their target. With the exocrine organs, organs with duct systems, they release their secretory products, they travel down the duct, and they're delivered to where their target is. Within the endocrine system, we're looking at hormones that are going to have to get into the bloodstream, and they're going to have to circulate through the body. And so they have to, in many cases, circulate a very long distance before interacting with cells that have receptors for them, before interacting with cells that are, in essence, their targets. And so we have to have the blood system involved with the transport of these things and so we're going to be looking at uh, capillary beds around endocrine uh, cells. They're going to be very good for delivering these, uh, picking up and delivering uh, these uh, hormones and also because they're not being directed uh, in a very specific way towards their target, uh, they're not being transported down a duct system, these hormones have to work at very low concentrations because it's unlikely that a lot of the hormone is going to get to the target cells. Uh, they're going to be able to respond to it. So the important thing to keep in mind is that these hormones are going to have a very specific regulatory effect on a particular target cell. And so the hormones are going to be released. They're essentially going to be a molecule that's going to be transported through the body and they're going to interact with the receptor either on a cell surface or within the cell. And only those cells with the receptor protein are going to be able to respond to that. Uh, the hormone can you know, bathe across a, a number of other cells, but without the receptor, those other cells are not going to respond to it. Now, there are two general classes of hormones. The first are going to be the peptide hormones. And so these can be proteins, uh, glycoproteins, or, or even short peptides that can be secreted, they can be picked up by the bloodstream, circulated through the body. And in general, the peptide hormones are going to interact with specific cell surface receptors. So they're going to be molecules on the surface of the membrane. They're going to be capable of binding to that hormone. And in general, when the hormone binds to the receptor, they're going to activate or stimulate some type of secondary messenger system. So the primary messenger, the first messenger, is going to be the hormone. The second messenger is going to be something that's going to be going on within the cell, uh, activating cyclic AMP, activating the PIP pathways, uh, um, the IPP pathways, a variety of other pathways like that. But essentially, activating changes in a second messenger system 
and changing what those second, second messenger system are going to be able to control and regulate within the cell. Generally, either turning up or turning down some type of cellular process. The second category of hormones are going to be steroid hormones. And now the peptide hormones, uh, as proteins, are going to be water soluble. They're going to be able to get through the body, being transported within the bloodstream, transported within the interstitial fluid by diffusion relatively easily. Steroid hormones, though, are going to be lipid soluble hormones. Lipid soluble meaning they're going to have some fat component associated with them. Generally, most steroid hormones are going to have a cholesterol ring. Uh, things like testosterone or uh, estrogen. And because they're lipid soluble, it means that they're going to be able to cross a plasma membrane relatively easily, uh, but they're going to be difficult uh, at being transported within an aqueous environment. So they're going to be difficult to transport on their own within the bloodstream or within the interstitial fluid or even within uh, the cytoplasm of the cell. So because of that, steroid hormones are often going to require some type of carrier protein, some type of protein that's going to be able to bind to them and then transport them through the aqueous uh, matrix that is found within the body. And so they interact with these carrier proteins and it helps them get to their target location and have their effect. Now, peptide hormones generally are going to bind to receptors on the plasma surface, activate a second messenger system. Steroid hormones, though, are going to tend to cross the plasma membrane, get into the cells, in many cases get into the nucleus of cells, and interact with nuclear receptors. And so basically what happens is the steroid hormone often complexes with something that is going to bind to DNA, and by binding to the DNA, directly altering gene transcription. And so it has a different target and a different effect than what we would see with the traditional peptide hormones. That finishes up our overview of um, the endocrine system. I come back for part two of our lecture series where we're going to take a look at the pituitary gland.